This is the Menendez Brothers. Quest for Justice from the Hidden Killers podcast and True Crime Today. Revisiting a case like the Menendez Brothers, years later, you think you know the story, right? But the sources you sent over, wow, they really get into some fascinating territory. It's not just true crime. It's about how our views on abuse, on trauma, even on the legal system itself, have shifted since this whole thing first gripped the world. And that's what makes the new evidence so compelling. It doesn't just add a few details. It makes you question the whole foundation of what we thought we knew. Exactly. Okay, so for anyone tuning in, we're talking 1989, Beverly Hills, a mansion, right? Jose and Kitty Menendez are found murdered brutally. Their sons, Lyle and Eric, are eventually arrested. But the stuff you sent me, it paints a picture that's way more complicated than just some open and shut case. You hit the nail on the head. The prosecution, they initially focused on the crime scene. And yeah, it was horrific. Multiple shotgun blasts, close range, the sheer brutality of it. They actually thought it was a mob hit at first. I can see why. But then you have this detail about the brothers, after the murders, going on a spending spree. Cars, watches, the whole nine yards. It's easy to see how the prosecution landed on a greed-driven motive. Right. On the surface, it tracks. But you wanted to go deeper. And the brothers, they claim self-defense. Years of abuse, they said, at the hands of their father. And the details, as they come out in these sources, they're really disturbing. To put it mildly, Lyle's actual courtroom testimony sends chills down your spine. Mm -hmm. Talking about being molested at a young age, forced into sexual acts with his father. I mean, one transcript you sent, he says, and I'm quoting directly here, he would uh, fondle me and he would ask me to do the same with him. And this wasn't just a one time thing either. Both brothers claimed years of abuse, physical, emotional, sexual. Eric, in his testimony, he claimed this went on right up until days before the murders described his dad as controlling, terrifying, someone who instilled real fear in both of them. And then there's that awful detail, Lyle allegedly reenacting that abuse with a younger Eric. Mm. Talking a messed up family dynamic. That's exactly where the prosecution jumped in with what they called the abuse excuse. Mm. They basically said the brothers invented these allegations to get away with murder. Which back then wasn't as unusual a reaction as it might seem now. But the defense, they countered with self-defense, right? Yeah. Saying the brothers genuinely believed their lives were at risk. And they pointed to the fact that Lyle and Eric bought shotguns just days before the murders. Yeah, which at first glance seems like premeditation. But the defense spun it as an act of desperation, a way to protect themselves from a threat they thought was very, very real, which is where the Puzzins testimony comes in. Alan and Andy. Right. Because they were either told about the abuse or saw it firsthand. Is that right? Exactly. Their accounts add this whole other layer to the case. The jury didn't buy it at the time, but the fact that they corroborated parts of the brother's story, it lends some credibility to the idea that there's more to this than meets the eye. And this is where it gets really interesting. Years go by, and then, bam, new evidence. This new evidence throws a whole new light on what led up to that night in Beverly Hills. And it's not just one thing. You know, it's like two separate discoveries that really make you wonder about that guilty verdict. Let's start with the letter. This one really jumped out at me from your notes. What is the deal with this letter? So it's a letter Eric wrote to his cousin, Andy, back in 88. Get this months before the murders even happened. And he's talking about being scared, anxious. There's even a line. Hold on. I've got it right here. It's still happening, Andy, but it's worse for me now. I'm afraid he is crazy. And you realize this isn't some lawyer coach confession, right? This is just a terrified kid telling someone what's going on. And this letter, it was just hiding in plain sight all these years. It only surfaced later. But the really interesting thing is how it ties into Andy's testimony, the one the prosecution basically tore apart back then. So it's like potential proof that what he was saying was true all along. Which brings us to that other piece of new evidence, Roy Rosolo. This is where it gets into the whole Menudo thing, isn't it? Exactly. So Jose Menendez, he was an exec at RCA Records. The label Menudo was signed to. And Rosolo was in the band. Now, we have to be careful here. These are allegations. We can't state them as facts. But his claims are huge in this context because they get at Jose Menendez's character. He's saying Jose Menendez abused him, right? Right. And, okay, that doesn't directly prove anything about what happened with Lyle and Eric. But it does make you think about what kind of man Jose Menendez really was. Exactly. It adds to this pattern of behavior, a pattern the defense could say backs up the brothers' claims. Don't forget, the whole prosecution case hinged on painting them as cold-blooded, greedy killers, and this new evidence just throws a wrench in that. So legally speaking, what now? Could this actually lead to a retrial? It's definitely possible. 
This new evidence, the defense could use it to try for a retrial or at least get the case reviewed. Remember, the brothers, they got first-degree murder convictions, life sentences. But with this new stuff, if a jury believed it, they might go with manslaughter instead. And that is a completely different ballgame when it comes to sentencing, right? Manslaughter, it's not getting off scot-free, but it could mean a much shorter sentence than life behind bars. Absolutely. It all comes down to whether the new evidence is seen as credible, strong enough to make a difference to the original verdict. This whole case, it's like a masterclass in how justice is rarely simple. It's messy, complicated, and sometimes it takes decades for the truth, or at least something closer to it, to come out. Which brings us back to that central question. Did Lyle and Eric Menendez kill for money? Or did years of alleged abuse push them to a breaking point? And it's a question that divides even their own family, doesn't it? Some relatives believe the brothers completely, but others say, no way, they're manipulators, they made it all up. It just shows how much this case still gets people riled up all these years later. And I think for us, you know, looking at it through the lens of these sources, it really makes you think about how we deal with tough information, especially when you're talking about trauma, abuse, that kind of thing. It's true. We're so much more aware now of how abuse affects people long term than we were back then. In the yeah. late 80s. It wasn't that it didn't exist, but the way we talked about it, the way people reacted, it was different. Totally. This whole abuse excuse thing, the way the prosecution used it, so cynical. Back then, it was easier to just dismiss it. But now we understand more about how trauma changes people, how it can lead to actions, even years down the line. So having really dug into all this, what stands out to you the most from these sources? What's the biggest takeaway? For me, it's how this case makes you face some really tough stuff. It's about the flaws in the justice system, the long shadow of trauma, the fact that we can never really know what happens in families behind closed doors. Even with all the evidence, the court records, everything, there's this ambiguity that just hangs there. Right. It's like sometimes the answers aren't the point. It's about asking the tough questions that get you thinking. And this case, man, with all its twists and turns, the different sides of the story, this new evidence, it gives you a lot to chew on. For sure. It makes you examine your own assumptions, how you view human nature, what justice even means when you're dealing with a situation this complicated and tragic. This deep dive has been quite the journey. We've covered a lot of ground. So as we wrap up, we want to leave you with this. What's your take on the Menendez brothers now? Has this new evidence changed your mind or are you still wrestling with the same questions everyone has been asking for decades? Thanks for joining us for this deep dive. It's been quite a journey. Want to know more about the Menendez Brothers? Just search the Menendez Brothers Quest for Justice wherever you get podcasts and press subscribe. From the Hidden Killers Podcast and True Crime Today.